Hi right, guys, I sat still driving, I won't walk to Reggie's, I mean he always walks here, I need to quit being so lazy. What's the point of me going to work out at the gym all the time if I'm too lazy to walk down a couple blocks to Reggie's, or Demcads, however you guys know, but be on Blog TV. Thought I'd take a walk with me, um, can't see in the dark, but I am expressing my rights to open carry, because I don't live in the safest area. So, uh, here we go. dark pretty much where you see lights <laughs> but uh hopefully you can see the glasses it's pretty dark out um there is a lot of lights and stuff but it's just there's no stars there's nothing in the sky so it's so dark that with the lights all you see is the lights <laughs> so that's what you're seeing about all you're gonna see. I was kind of planning to do such a large video, but I fair, you know, why not? People put weird stuff on YouTube. Why not a walk to Demcat's house from my house on YouTube? And I'm kind of walking fast. I won't want it to be like an eight minute long video. Hmm, I smell gas. Gas by the church. That's probably not a good sign. And that's like a really crooked church. But uh, uh as I said in our videos, born and raised here in Flint. A lot of people ask me why I haven't I left Flint yet. Here you go, they see me. <laughs> Why haven't I left Flint? I don't know, to be honest with you. I had thoughts leaving Flint. But when the economy took a big plunk, I kind of thought, like, I have a lot of connections here. I know a lot of people. I got a lot of family here. If it came down to where I need someone to help me or I had no means to, you know, help myself anymore in my family, would I want to be in some different state for the possibility of a better job or a safer environment with no one there to help me? No one that I could move a family into and, you know, get a hot bed and something warm to eat? Or stick with Flint until things change and, you know, be somewhere to have a little bit of security? Yes, it's dangerous, but there's also security. I have... I have many places I can go if things get real, you know, tough or if we lose a house or fire or if anything happens like that. I got many options. So, being as is, being dangerous and all is still safer. It's safer because it's a sense of security. I know that I can puts my family into a home or a family member's home or a friend's home and I know they'll have a roof over their head and food to eat. If I go to a different state where I have no friends or family, don't know nobody, and that job or whatever I go chasing doesn't fall through, well what do I have? Not much. <laughs> I mean, I'm stuck. Either I find a way to get the money to get them back to Flint, where I can get them some more stay, or I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I figure something out, but here, there's not really much to figure out. Oh, I can, you know, I can go to Reggie's, for instance. I can go to my stepdad's. I can go to my dad's. I can go to my aunt's. And many other friends I could go to. And uh, because Flint's not so safe and not such a great place right now to live everything is affordable I mean there's anywhere in the United States of America that you can afford to live financially as Flint now find a job to stay support it's hard but even if you just side job it and just make the bare minimum and you know wheel and deal with money here and there you can at least support life at Flint. Now you can get an apartment 
for under $400 a month with lights, water, utilities, everything. And just watch how you eat, you know? It's possible. And other big cities, our places, I mean, you're talking about $1,200, $1,500 a month for rent. A lot of times, that's no utilities. <sighs> this economy, I, I, I can't picture myself trying to do that. Not at all. A lot of places have tolls on roads. Hell, around here, you're down in the E, you can barely get your car home. You most likely can't afford to pay a toll, <laughs> you know? I'm not saying tolls are bad. Some places they are good. But if you're not financially in a financially secured location, tolls don't really do much for you. I mean, tolls here would be pointless. The only thing I could really do here that's good, that would be a good idea, would be for them to uh, uh, get rid of the salt. We're one of the few states that uses salt in the winter. The problem with that is it destroys our vehicles, it destroys the roads. I mean, it plays a horrible part in destroying our streets, our infrastructure, our bridges, everything. It's corrosive. If we just go to sand or whatever else, you know, other means they have, it, it would be so much better. Even if we just skipped salt all together and sand, you know, just sand expressways or something. It'd be so much better. You know, people just have to learn how to drive, like in Alaska and stuff. They don't salt nothing or do anything in Alaska. They plow it down to where you're not getting stuck. You just have to know how to drive. You know, common sense. So, uh, you know, some thoughts that run across my mind as I'm thinking of Flint. They're trying to raise gas taxes again, supposedly for the roads, which getting, real, getting rid of a cost would actually help lower the cost of repairing roads because we could go and just do the repairs and then stay repaired longer. And all these times they're raising taxes and charging more money for the streets. Honestly, all you see people doing is throwing a little patch, you know, tar, asphalt in the road and they don't even have the, you know, they don't even pack it down or at least back their vehicle up over it so that when you drive through it, you know, they let us do it. They let us run over it, splat this asphalt all over our cars, stick it to the paint, make it a mess. And why? Why, why should we have to do it? We're one paying these people to do this job, but they're destroying our stuff to finish the job. And they're not repairing the street. They're throwing some crap in a hole, which next time a plow truck or someone comes by, it's going to fall out. And then it's going to flap and bust the windshield or flatten someone's tire. That's a shame. Every year they raise something or take more money for the streets. And I have yet to see them do an honest good job on any of these streets. <sighs> more frustrations. <laughs> Well, this video is going to be about almost nine minutes long now. I think at the 10 minute mark, if I haven't made it to Reggie's, I'm just going to say goodbye to you guys. And uh, hope you understand. I'm trying to think of something else to talk about while I'm walking. Um, whew. What do I think? Theft. Theft is an ugly thing, but something you guys all need to watch out for. Theft is going to definitely jump up. It has jumped up. You know, as far as even just theft of stuff like copper, wire, and things inside homes. They've been stripping churches, and not abandoned churches. You know, churches are still open. They've been stripping homes when people are gone. They've been, they've been stripping people while they're there. I don't know how people don't know that their aluminum signs being ripped off their house while they're there asleep but there's been hundreds of cases where people i guess they say they heard a noise when they go out there half their house the side is missing they, these people have been able i guess they thought maybe it was neighbors just making noise or something but there's actually people stealing the side and off their house it, 
It's crazy. And I'm sure, you know, the B&E is going to jump up. Oh, look at the street light. You see me. Hello. The B&E, that's past 10 minutes. We'll go 11. Hold that. The B&Es have jumped up. Um, people are getting desperate. I'm sure things like food are soon to be next on the list of people stealing. Um, cars, not really been a big... We've had a couple attempted carjackings, but because a lot more people are uh, carrying weapons, um, two of them have been... One, the perpetrator was shot by the person who was trying to jack the car from. Another one, they were just scared off. But, uh, carjackers definitely has dropped down a lot. So, uh, well, that's what I want to talk about. Guys, be safe. You know, crime's going to go up. Protect yourselves. Protect your families. And this is next day. Well, you know what? This is next day. About to say that he has successfully made it to Reggie's house in 12 minutes. Forget it. We're going to go 12 minutes. I went from 10 to 11, <laughs> now 12. But let's remember, protect your family. Security stuff, talk to your family, you know, what to look out for, what to watch out for. Um, talk with your neighbors. Most people, sadly, in these neighborhoods these days don't even know their neighbors. They have no idea who they live next to. And for that reason, why would anyone want to stick their neck out if they see something happening at your home? You know? Come out and say, hey. When I'm home, I see something suspicious. What number can I call? Or what do you want me to do? Do you want me to call the police? Do you want me to call you? You know, um, I want you, uh, you know, I hope you do the same for me type deal. And it's kind of like networking. They teach you, you know, career job things, always to network. Well, also for safety and security, you want to network. But uh, arrived at Reggie's house exactly 12 minutes. You guys enjoy. Bye.